Would you like me to start? Right. So, thanks, Dharam. So, we're just getting back into continuing studying what we are studying about our understanding of church, right? Uh, the way we are doing this every week is we're going to be looking at, uh, there's going to be a little bit of talk, 10, 12, maybe maximum 15 minutes of talk, a little bit of group discussion. We come back debrief and we break with communion uh, like we did last Sunday. So let me just dig into this. Last, last, time, we, last time we saw the, the, the message that the local church has been given. And why the message of Jesus, why the message of the gospel it changes everything, right? Today we're going to be looking at this topic of spiritual growth, spiritual growth, okay? And we hope that we get to understand more about uh, church and the purpose of the local church through spiritual growth. So, 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 so mark another mark of a healthy church is that the members of the church are concerned about uh, growth, about spiritual growth. Okay, when Paul Paul makes a statement, and he says this statement to the church in Corinth, this is his hope as he writes the letter. He says, "Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow." Our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. But that is really what his hope was. And I have a question that, that, that we need to be thinking about. What did Paul mean when he said this to the church? What does faith continue to grow? This, this aspect of faith continuing to grow. What did it mean for the first century church in Corinth? And what, did it, what does it mean for us today? What does it even look like for us today? And before I go on to more verses that Paul, more addresses, uh, more places where Paul addresses this, before I go ahead, I want to bring to us an error, a possible error that we as Christians are very inclined and we, uh, we have a tendency to embrace. The error in our understanding of the gospel impact on our individuals is this we think that we can be baby Christians for a whole lifetime we think that this kind of faith that grows spiritual growth is only for those who are extra enthusiastic who are extra passionate about the kingdom you know who uh, it's reserved for a few that's an error Okay. In reality, we see that growth is actually a sign of life. Even outside of the local church, okay, but growth is a sign of life. Growing trees are trees that are living. Growing animals are animals that are living. Growing involves this essence of uh, increase and advance. So what I'm really trying to say is in many areas of our life experience when something stops growing decay begins leading to death. This is true of every area of life. Okay. This is true of every area of life. Now this is the danger that I want to bring about. I, I, I want to address okay, a danger. The danger is this, we are entirely involved and connected to all kinds of growth for other things. Think about your career, each of us, think about your business or your career. None of us will be satisfied with being a fresher for life. None of us will be satisfied with having the status of a fresher the kind of work a fresher does, the kind of salary a fresher draws, none of us will be satisfied that for life. Think about your own aspirations. In 2005, uh, the Nokia 3310 was the most up-to-date mobile phone there was. After almost two decades, none of us 
have suppressed aspirations of owning a Nokia 3310. None of us. Even our aspirations have grown. Think about our families. We all have a desire to grow in a more secure lifestyle. We all have a desire to uh, you know, grow in our uh, aspect of comfort, lifestyle, security, protection for our spouses, protection for our kids, the kind of education that they should receive, the kind of homes that we'll, you know, that we need to live in. And, and, and really speaking, in all genuineness, there is no sin in pursuing reasonable growth and excellence in all walks of life. But the danger that I want to address this morning is this. The danger is this, that we can, we can think, we think that we can grow in every area of our lives. But when it comes to gospel maturity, I am completely satisfied with being a baby Christian till the day I die. This, my friends, is a danger. It's not just a danger. I want to say it's a pitfall. It's a pitfall. If this is apparent and noticeable, if this is where we are, where we are beginning to, if this is where we are, where we are beginning to say, I want to grow in every area of my life. I want to think about my, I want my aspirations to grow. I want my family life to grow. I want, my, I want to, uh, 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 the dreams that I have for my kids, I want that to grow. I want my career to grow. I, I want to grow in every area of my life. But when it comes to the gospel, I am completely, deeply, enthusiastically satisfied with being a fresher. This, I think, is a pitfall. Okay, so coming back to Paul. Paul hoped that the Corinthians, and this is what I was said over here. Paul hoped that the Corinthian church, the faith would continue to grow. But it's not just uh, to the Corinth church. He says this to almost so many churches that he, he went to. Look at this. He says this to the church in Ephesus. Instead, speaking the truth in love, that we will grow to become in every aspect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. He says this to the church in Colos. He says to please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. And then he says, being strengthened with all power. Then he speaks to the church in Thessalonica. He says, we've got to thank, we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And, and the love all of you have for one another is increasing. It's not just Paul, even Peter. Peter said it in his letters when he exhorted the Christians. He says, oops, he says, like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. We're going to be looking at this passage in the group discussion today. So that you may grow up now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Friends, I want to bring, bring this to you that spiritual growth, growth, maturity are, is a consistent theological theme in the Bible. In response to the gospel, the gospel assumes that we, you know, that we are people who will grow. And I'd, I'd like to ask you this question. Look at this growth chart, okay? And and really, this is this has got nothing to do with uh, uh, you know pointing figures at anybody. You guys inspect your own life, uh, own lives. What does growth look like for you and me today? There was a time where each of us fell in love with Jesus. I don't, I don't deny this reality. I really believe that there was a point of time in history that each of us genuinely fell in love with Jesus. We genuinely acknowledged that the standard of Christ, God is so high, His holiness is so high, I can do nothing to reach it. My, my, I, I am growing in my sinfulness, really. I need a savior outside of me. Dear God, I accept your offer of Jesus in salvation. I, I, I genuinely believe that each of us would have had this experience of falling in love with Jesus. And just as Paul tells the church in Colossus, since the day you heard the gospel, 
you guys have been growing. That's what Paul tells the church. And I really like to ask each of us, how is it going today? How is it going today? Okay. A yesteryear theologian by the name of Jonathan Edwards, he attempted to answer this question differently. What, what is true growth in the Christian, in Christian discipleship? What does true growth look like? And this is what he says. Growth in the Christian discipleship is not just merely being excited, not just increasingly use more and more religious kind of language, not just increasingly growing in scripture of knowledge, not just, I mean, it's, it's not even just having a concern for the church. All of that is true and good. Jonathan Edwards says something so beautiful. He says, the only observable sign, the only evidence sign of life of increasing holiness, of increasing maturity and increasing growth is a life of a desire for holiness rooted in Christian self-denial. And the church should be marked by this kind of concern for this kind of a desire to grow in godliness and holiness which is rooted in, in self-denial. And I'll tell you why this Christian or this self-denial is important. But before I do that is this. One of the unintended consequences of the church neglecting holiness is that there is an increased difficulty in growing disciples. So in an undisciplined church, The members don't know who are their role models. The members don't know who are the examples to follow. In fact, Paul tells to the, uh, to the leaders and elders, be live lives where your lives are an example to others. But in a church where there is no discipline, this is a very confusing place. <coughs> role models are uh, confused. Uh, uh, examples are unclear. Okay. And so God's that's not God's, God's plan for the church. And as I come to the last slide for today, I want to ask us this. Is NBCC really growing? And I don't really mean in numbers. We we love that we would grow it with more and more people joining our fold and you know growing in numbers. But I want to bring to you some signs. Now these are not signs that these signs are not the way to grow as much as it is the result of growth. It's not the way to grow. It's, it, when growth happens, all of this happens. Okay. And as I was preparing, I was asking myself this. How do we as a church respond to missions? How do we as a church, how many of us are really getting a sense of responsibility in reaching out? Do each of us as a, you know, in the church really have a desire for increased prayer? Are we really desiring spiritual renewal? Is our giving becoming more and more sacrificial? Now, these were not the this was not the way to grow for the early church. This is this was the result that happened when the gospel grew in the hearts of the people of the early church. All of this happens. And here's the thing: when all of this actually happens, who gets the credit? I want to end by this and, and the, you guys are going to be talking more in the group discussions but I want to end by this. When we do, when we do see a church that is composed of members growing in Christ likeness, God gets the glory. The, not the leader, not the pastor, not the members, not people. God gets the glory. Look what Paul says. God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor who waters is anything but only God who makes things grow. We might think that our growth would only bring glory to ourselves. But Peter knew, this is what he says, live such good lives among the pagans that even though they accuse you of do, doing wrong, they may see your good work, they may see your good deeds and ultimately God would get the glory on the day that he visits. So worldly growth leads to this kind of self-glory. But gospel growth, 
leads to each of us having to say, no, I don't want to get the glory. I want to posture my life in a way where God gets the glory. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to release you guys and Tarang is going to hopefully help us into getting into our breakout rooms. Now, last time there was an issue. The issue was this, that we felt that time was short. Questions were more. We didn't have the questions. I'm putting the questions on the screen. You guys could take a screenshot. Uh, I'm also going to put this on the group. All of your facilitators, group facilitators have these questions. I'm going to leave this here for about 30 seconds. But here's the thing. We're going to give 20 minutes. And I really hope you would have uninterrupted, elongated time of conversations where genuinely each of us grow in our discussions. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let, if you guys could just unmute and say, is that okay? Is this exciting? Are you all excited? Are we just doing something like another rhythm, Christian rhythm tradition? Or is this something exciting? Are you guys looking forward to this? Totally. Totally. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, uh, right. At the end of the church, we're going to welcome a few friends who have joined us for the first time. But uh, Tarang, could you help us in putting us in groups? Just a second. Well, you can take more than a second. Right. You can tell the time you go to your groups, listen to some music. Anita or someone from Anita's group? Yes, so regarding first question, so what will the Peter's what is Peter's move for this Christian? So the first thing which we saw was like getting rid of ourselves. So so by seeing the verse, so what we learned was like getting rid of ourselves. So that should be the prior point. And like in the verse two said, like like a newborn baby, like I, like I have to get rid of myself first, and then I have to crave for more spiritual milk as a like a newborn baby. Like I have to crave for it. It's like I have to crave for it, and I have to grow up in that salvation. So that's what we could identify in the, from that verses and growing up. Uh, Growing up in the salvation was like not uh, because uh, growing up in faith and gifts of Holy Spirit. So we have to grow up in that and we have to practice that in our life. So grow up means like not just knowing or to have more knowledge of scripture or to have a daily pre, a daily Bible reading. So we just have we have to start uh, implementing that in our life as well. So that's what grow up means. So that's what we could uh, realize from that verses and from those two questions thank you so much implementing did anybody did any other group have any thoughts on this first question our group looked at it our group looked at it as um basically replacing those things the evil the slander the malice with the word of god Right. So, you know, desiring the word of God and it, it would basically remove those other things from our life. It's beautiful. That's beautiful. You guys try to comprehend on what's the process of doing that? <laughs> we actually did discuss that a little bit. And, you know, we came to the consensus that the Holy Spirit has to be developing or God has to be developing that desire within us that the desire is innate in mankind. And you can see that in the way in the Old Testament, they generated idols and built idols and yeah. they were worshiping something at all the time. So that 
uh, that desire is innate in us. That's right. And it, That's right. But we need the Holy Spirit to point it in the correct direction towards the true and living God. That's a beautiful point you mentioned there, Alva, and your group that, that we are all, naturally, we are all worshipers. Right? Uh, uh, thanks for that. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that. That's a wise thing. Any did you did any other group have anything extra to add to this question? What did Paul? Uh, what did Peter mean when he said, "Grow up in salvation"? So uh, our group uh, we were discussing, and so the, we we came up with three major points. Like I wrote it down as points. So it was uh, grow up from the time you have accepted the Lord. Like, don't just stay there. Many people are tend to stay there at that spot and just be always be like receivers, always be like receivers. And by growing up, because there was a whole list, Peter was talking about do this, do that, do this, get rid of this. So it was like tackling the areas of unrest. Right, right. If you're not tackling the areas of unrest, you're just you're just staying there. It's it's all pretty. And wow. uh, Justin said, uh, and David said, crave for what next? Don't just stay there. And so Justin came up with this verse, Hebrew 5 verses 13 to 14. It says, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. And even though Peter talks about craving for milk, uh, Peter, in a sense, wants people to grow, not just stay there. Because once you go at a out of the milk diet, you go to a mature diet of solid food. Right. And so, and so we should not be just like, okay, the milk is all good and there, and we are growing little by little. We should not just stay there, and that's what we all were. These are some. Fabulous observations. Okay, there's some wonderful observations. I want to move to question two, and I'm going to request uh, uh, Parish's group. But here's the thing: so, question one address the what. What is you know growing, growing in salvation, growing in your faith, growing on all of that. Question two is really beginning to answer the question: How do we do that? What are the first steps in doing that? Okay, in question two we have two questions. The first one is: Do you agree? or not is there any group who said who does not agree is there anybody who said who does not agree if you said you do not agree i think we should have coffee together anita or rebellion in our group huh or rebellion in our group okay okay no i'm just saying if there was anybody i would be more than happy to have some coffee but um, esther either you or somebody in your group can you answer the second part of that question what are the first steps we need to take to maintain growth. So we all know that we need to pursue growth. We need growth is what we all desire. But how do we process that? How do we, what Hepsi is saying? How do we measure? That's another good question. So let's look at that. Uh, let's look at Hepsi's question as a follow-up question. But let's try to answer this question first. What are the first steps we need to take to maintain continuous growth? Esther, your group? Yeah, so uh, my group discussed that um, a worldly standard is a very me-centered standard and so that automatically glorifies self and one way of us to is to you know get rid of sin but before that is to accept that we do need god because without god we we can do nothing we have to depend on him for uh, everything and including our, our growth and um, so it's like getting rid of sin and and craving spirituality and Moji also said, like, you know, so the first point you said is the first point you said is accepting and realizing our need, uh, you know, that, that we are weak, isn't it? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yeah. You're saying the second thing? No, so, so, yeah. No, no. So he was saying, uh, growing like a child, a child keeps growing. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, yeah. so, yeah. So the first step would have to be accepting that we need God and then getting rid of us and craving spirituality and keep growing. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Esther. Uh, Parish, your group had any thoughts on this? Uh, the first steps to growth? Uh, yeah, so I have um, even uh, um, Jake's and uh, Hepsi giving the one of the things that Jacob said that when uh, growth leads in, in a workplace, uh, you know, it becomes very, it just becomes very self 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It at workplace is something which is of self. However, in gospel, we uh, it is not about yourself. Even coming back to what you explained in the morning, so we just he just said about how important it is because God leads us, and that's where we learn to lead others, and that only comes through the gospel. Um, that so that's again, so that's steps, again you know, realizing. That's again realizing, isn't it? Point of realization. Yes, that was uh, that was one of the things. And why do we need to do that? Because uh, it's again. uh the glory the glory goes to god um but we discuss more on the second part i mean if can i share that or uh, that is it. are you are you addressing the third question no the what are the first steps i need to take yeah, to yeah. please carry on please carry on yeah so the in that we actually thought on the first uh, you know the steps i need to take uh, that was uh hepsi mentioned about going back to understanding and identifying the spiritual uh, gifts that we have of what what do we need to do and uh, try to utilize them um what is it that the first i need to do how then we we, we discuss about how are we really trying to uh, get accustomed with the fellowship uh, how are we trying to get used to pairing uh, uh, with a continual fellowship with people and identifying uh, if there is uh, some kind of areas of growth in okay. in that where i start with and so, if someone can also tell me so it's identifying so that's the key word you used over there identifying uh, yes. okay accepting acknowledging right uh, did any other group have any thoughts on this question first steps uh, tarang or alva or anita's group so uh we came up with points again so if the first one was uh, to continue it was because it was not like you're starting it is you're continuing growing so yeah. we came up with a example of you have already entered the gym you are in the gym how do you continue to be a part of it so it was like you flee from the desire of not going or you flee from sin mm-hmm. so this is where you continue to grow and then the other the one of the good points was allowing yourself to mentor to be mentored on wow that is where you That's continue to grow that is where you continue to grow otherwise if you are just self mentoring yourself uh, it's you're at the first stage you allow yourself to ment- to be mentored and then community you grow together right and then the the whole desire for gospel it right, just right. if it if it is not from within it's it's it becomes a have to it does right. not it is not what i want to so right, right. i'm really yeah. glad your group got that got that community aspect into the first steps brilliant brilliant that is uh, did any uh, any other group has the first steps what did you think hey i want to read what rex is saying uh, agree that worldly glory leads to arrogance pride feeling insensitive but if we suffer we can but if we suffer we can feel the pain of others like like as it is said god's strength lies in perfect in our weakness we should be god oriented pleasers not people oriented or pleasers uh, reading of the bible meditating on word asking and seeking god for gifts spiritual gifts relying on god completely in our situations and seeking him beautiful thank you rex thank you so much okay any other group uh, uh, i'm trying to wind up in the next 2 3 minutes but in this first steps any other group had any thoughts Okay, I want to endorse the yeah. Ab, you're saying something. Uh, yeah, like uh, Janine had shared, like how uh, newborn babies they're always hungry. Mm. Always, they always want milk. They're always longing for milk. So, uh, and it just got me to think, like you know, if we don't have a longing for the word, which means we need to recognize that we are hungry. We need to recognize we're thirsty. But if we don't recognize we're hungry or thirsty, then we need to find out what is. preventing us from realizing that we are hungry or thirsty for the word man we are going deep ab answer this question answer the real question where do we get the longing where do we realize we are hungry how do we realize we are spiritually in need of food and water <laughs> you need to answer uh, yeah in in, in, in community in community yeah? what is community what can community do that that leads us to being inspired the fact that we need we need more of the holy spirit we need more of the gospel we need we are hungry 
what can what can god do in community you mean uh, look out for each other kind of thing right 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 absolutely learn from others learn from others you will learn from others yeah yeah absolutely yeah so yeah great great i think this is great learning the last question of course says uh, i don't want to spend too much time on the last question but um, did you guys identify the motive behind the statement my family is christian i've accepted jesus why do i need to grow more than this did any of you all have time for this So Elva shared like how uh, um, you know it's it's not uh, I mean Janine also uh, like it's not that we uh, because our parents are Christian or we come born in Christian families that determines how we that we need to grow as Christians. It's this journey is our own. Yeah, it's a solo walk. Mm. Yeah, Ruth Ruth was saying how just because she grew up in a Christian family, you know, she has to make the relationship with God on her own because it's a relationship between her and God or it's a relationship between me and God right so so our parents our family they have nothing to do with our relationship with God just like you know my my parents don't have much to do with my relationship with my wife <laughs> <laughs> they have their own relationships with my wife you know, and I have a relationship with my wife. Right. And so it, it's Ruth was pointing out how we as we grow up, you know, from children and become adults, how we have to basically take that responsibility on ourselves. Right. Hey, I think that's amazing. You know, what's really amazing is when we're doing all of these group discussions and talking about the time just flies. <laughs> and before I knew it, it's already one hour and you won't believe a uh, last month when we leaders were talking we said you know guys let's bring it down to 45 minutes let's bring it down to one hour let's say let's let it be more and more meaningful but i realized that as we're digging more into conversations and scripture we're really enjoying being together time flies when you're having fun